Okay, so this bad boy is going to get a bit of an upgrade. It's currently rocking 9,000 crank set, front brake, chain, 7400 rear brake. I'm going to ditch all the red on it and replace it all with more than 9,000. 9070, in fact. This puppy is getting a full internal DI2. So that means. With these stupid cheap bars, these ones you've seen broken on other YouTube channels, no doubt. The Tosik, Tosik, who knows how to pronounce that? Forty dollar Aeronova copy. If you want the real ones, that'd be like three hundred bucks or something. Anyway, got to drill a little hole in these bars. Cross your fingers. The plan is right in the center here. Tiny little hole, tiny. And then another one, top of the steerer. And then, oh, a good question where, to, where the best height is to have it on the back of the steerer. Maybe about about there I'm thinking perhaps thankfully the front of the steerer is what's loaded under braking so I'm reasonably confident like a one and a half mil hole isn't going to be too detrimental we'll be shaving these cable stops and that one and I'm not sure whether the cable will run down the chain stay or maybe the seat stay. There's like a blind hole up here, which I wouldn't have to put a grommet in if I went that way. Whereas since this kind of points down, I want to seal that up if the wire's coming out of here. Just Not sure whether I can get through here. We'll see. Also not quite sure what I'm going to do with my A junction. It's just the normal under stem one. But it's going to be stashed inside the bars or the stem. It's going to be tricky. So here we can see of there's a light. Played a bit of this knifey spoony before. You I thought that was a fairly trick bit of bodging. But hurdle the first. She cannot take her, Captain. Let's see what I can do about that with some judicious butchery. Because that's pretty much got to go in there. There's no other way in the frame. I guess it might go in the steerer, but yeah, no, nah, fuck that. It's going down here where any discretionary weight belongs. Oh, yeah. That was easy. Just like a millimetre or so off each side. Bob's your uncle. And she's in. Thought that would be the hardest part. Hopefully it is. Okay, so there are a few barriers in the frame. Uh, there's no way from the inside of the chain stay into any of this, but thanks to that huge bit of room here, there is the same 
space inside there that's actually blind as is that unfortunately because this is hollow all the way down here and it was just blocked up with a bit of excess epoxy um, not even fully blocked you could sort of see a hole through the goop um, but yeah this yeah uh, trying to get through there as desirable as that was I just thought there would not have been a good way to do it so cables gonna come out here would have been a little bit neater doing that yeah so here we go so that's pretty much well inside the maximum depth of any sort of cup you'd put in there or less any external bearing cup anyway um, and that puts it about pretty much halfway through the chain stay it was a bit disturbing how much carbon I had to drill through here <laughs> it kept going and going it must be a few millimeters the thickness at that point but oh well I was committed to that by then and unfortunately no way I had available to use anything more than just a standard drill bit so I was on the high speed and pushing pretty lightly once I got through the aluminium trying not to delaminate it I would imagine that since the drill's kind of pulling all the fibres against the aluminium there would have been very little chance of that if I wasn't just reefing on through it it was probably about that much thickness of carbon behind the BB shell there so that's looks like dog's breakfast through the camera but it feels smooth enough Might spend a bit more time on it. Um, yeah, so can fit the battery in. Get the cable down here and mm -hmm. <laughs> and so just need to test fit the front derailleur and find a good spot for the hole for that, which I'll use the diamond Dremel bit to make. Be a bit better idea than a normal drill bit if you can help it. Um, and yeah, I've been trying to figure out the situation here, so there'll be a hole in the back of the steerer about there, a hole bang in the middle of the hole that the stem has in the back of it. Um, as small as possible for the wires obviously because you don't want to go mucking around too much with your carbon steerer if at all damn that was a lot of work it took me about half an hour or so with hacksaw and a couple of files looks like ass but it's pretty smooth <laughs> um, yeah. uh, two more to go Okay, what have we here?
Sí, ni me ve. Some of the components on this board are freaking tiny. Like tiny, tiny. These are the smallest ones. Oh yeah, they get that small C. This little chip boop, here above my fingernail. Above that is a little one there, resistor or capacitor or something. Check it out. It's as long as the thickness of my fingernail. <laughs> so I had to be pretty careful to get that out in one piece. Just carved up the thing around it. And yeah, as you can see, if there was focus in the fucking fuck. We have two leads going to all this jazz, so you know, you just wire all this gear up in parallel. Bob's your uncle, and you don't need the charging port. And if you pop one of these things on the end of your charger and just plug that in to a lever or whatever, well, I wouldn't have any whatever. I can only plug it into a lever after this. So that was surprisingly confusing, but um, got it figured out in the end with one string going from the head tube up to the front derail hole, another from the rear derail hole to the front derail hole, and another from the seat mask down to the front derail hole. That's going to work. Okay, so we've got. What's going on in here? Coming through there. Coming up to here. Through there. Geez, not that much showing through the camera. So that's pretty slick. Bit of hot glue in there. Just a bit of bloody heat shrink over and over. Fine tune the um, stiffness with a bit of Sparky's tape just to so we don't get a spot where it's always folding too much when we're putting it in. So it's pretty. Let's see how this looks all stuffed in. Let's see if I can get the heat shrink through. No, that's not happening. Plan B. Okay. Plan B with Sparky's tape. Can we get all this through the three mil hole? Whoa. Even Plan C is having a hard time. That hole is so tight on that wire, there's no room for cello tape. It's alive! So, yeah. I, um. Oh, floopy. Say hello to floopy. Um, yeah. I couldn't be bothered continuing to video my progress. I just took a few photos. There's a build thread on bike forums in the mechanics forum. Um, so, Plan C eventually worked, I had to be super fiddly with the 
silo tape insulation on the joins on the FD cable where it all comes together. There's a little tiny bit of stuff just holding the wire in place there to make it do nice things as it moves around here instead of being a bit fugly. I lost me uh, my billet tie and aluminium 10 speed cassette. It's got an Altegra one on there, 1225. And uh, chuck some speed plays on. So now we're down to 6.28. I should put the old pedals on and see what the actual difference is with the DI2. Still got a fine little PCB mount momentary button to chuck in there. Tape it up obviously, I still gotta take it for a spin and dial in my position. And the uh pretty happy with the light on in the stem. Let's see if I can get that to fire up. There we go. Yeah, it's, it's pretty freaking pimping. Oh, I neglected to mention the rail is a 9070, but I got the nicer looking 9150 levers on there. They weren't cheap. Um, yeah, so pretty stoked with how it turned out. Let's see what old Smiley Dangle's got to say about it. This is not easy one-handed. There we go. Six point one. Oh, that's right. Yeah, this is without bar tape and plugs and bottle cage. Okay, so this is what we got with the old pedals and tape and cages. Cage. Um, it was 6.35, however, that was with this crazy light cassette that's only 10 speed, which incidentally I machined out. That's why it's got these spaces because. It was on a different, it was on this wheel, but I had uh, an RS80 Shimano wheel that I put an old 7 speed cassette on, reduced the dish, and managed to shoehorn this puppy in there. That was pretty cool, but that was another story. So, anyway, amazing what a difference the speed plays make. Holy crap, what a pair of boat anchors. What was I doing with these old clunkers on the beast, eh? 410 grams. Get out of here. You know, the little lollipops. This is just the titanium, sorry, the stainless ones. Booyah! Half a pound. Nothing to sneeze at. Well, I suppose the cleats add some of that back. But, uh... Sure is nice when you pick up the bike. So I guess I've left a fair few details out. Um, so the battery, uh, I drilled a couple of little holes in the top of it and hung a wire out of it. Just a little sort of wire jigger sort of meh, just to try and keep the orientation as I pulled it out otherwise it would tend to jam the wire. Uh, and I initially used frickin' twine to pull it out with, but that was a very sketchy proposition. And then I remembered I had um, some of this Kevlar stuff, which is super cool. So I used that instead, and that I've got a section of bubble wrap, probably about 
from oh, say from there up to there long about oh, yeah wide sort of curled up into a tube and I've got the Kevlar wrapped around that and taped at the ends and then the procedure is to stuff the battery down with something like this and then continue stuffing the the bubble wrap down so it's all nice and solid and then there's just a bit of extra Kevlar twine coming up to here just blue tacked in the back there so that works okay and then up here I got the um, the charging jack out of the DI2 port that's hot glued in there that was a bit of a bloody mission because I have to do that with it plugged into a bit of wire that goes up here then we've got um, the a junction is actually located by a bit of uh, uh, one of those hacked up, obviously with that glue in it. So that holds the little PCB in place here and acts as a light pipe for the LEDs. It's uh, hot glued into that thing, but it just sort of sits snugly in place there. Um, and yeah, there's a the wire went in. I had to poke it in through the stem. It was a ridiculously elaborate, already heavily molested KCNC expander plug, which I filed the Jesus out of for lightness. It's been further molested. We've got yeah, a couple of holes in the top here. I have to join it. You've got to cut that, unsolder it to get the stem off. But then I've got a phono jack out of a phone, a headphone jack out of a phone in here for the three wires coming up. There's an extra one for the A junction button. So, you know, I can pull my bars off and retake them easy enough. It's just, hopefully never have to do anything with the headset. <laughs> Although I was thinking, like, I've, I've you know, got a pretty mad little gap there. I was thinking it would be nice to jigger with me crown race and totally minimise that gap. That would be cool. Affect my head angle minutely and lower the stack by like a millimetre. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty freaking sleek, man. Very nice. We make a sexy time. <laughs> so, yeah. It's come together pretty sweet. Looking forward to taking it for a spin.